If you spend any time within active online gaming communities online, you've definitely heard the topic of pros versus casuals come up in reference to game design and balance. And I know, it's a tired debate at this point with each side refusing to budge, but the reason both sides have stagnated in their discussion is because they aren't even speaking to each other. They don't see that they are, at their core, on the same exact side. They've been pitted against each other in some semblance of a sibling rivalry where one side thinks the other side is the favorite child. Now, before we get into discussing this any further, just for clarity, I think it'd be helpful to define both of these groups. To me, pros is an outdated word to describe the complexity of competitive gamers nowadays, and because of this, I'm referring to this side as the competitive or comp community. This is made up of professional players and coaches, streamers and content creators who routinely compete in tournaments for their respective game, and then you have your general competitive gaming fans. Now, casuals, I think, is a bit of a misnomer. The makeup of this group is people who regularly engage with gaming content online via Reddit, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, etc. And they stay up to date with patch notes and news. They are diehard fans of games. And I think it's disingenuous to say this group is the majority of players, as I think a large chunk of the player base just gets on a game that they find fun and their friends happen to be playing, and they don't really keep up with all the happenings behind the scenes. And to defend that position, let me give some perspective. The largest Apex subreddit has 2.1 million subscribers, but Apex as a whole had an average of 63 million players in August according to ActivePlayer.io. My brother, a gamer himself, plays PUBG religiously, and I don't think he's ever looked at PUBG patch notes to find out what has been changed. He just gets on and plays the game. I'm not saying these diehard fans aren't a significant portion of the player base, but I do think, similarly to the competitive community, they vastly overestimate how many people actively share their position. But for the sake of simplicity and lack of a better term, I will be referring to this group in this video as the blanket term casuals. For full transparency while you watch this of where I tend to reside, it is within the competitive community. I enjoy playing a good chunk of games for fun, but when games are solely based on competition, think most first person shooters and PvP games, I like to improve, grind rank game modes, and watch tournaments. I've done my best while making this video to understand both sides as much as possible, but do feel disclosing the side I often agree with is important for you as the viewer. And I assure you, the side that I find myself on also has very little to do with my overall message in this video. And with all of that out of the way, we can move into the actual discussion. I personally feel this debate really ramped up in intensity over the past six to nine months. It certainly hit its highest point since I've been actively engaging in video games online since 2007. Sure, you had your outlier forum posts on Bungie.net about quote MLG tryhards, but it wasn't this bad. And I think it got especially bad when I saw this TikTok about a month ago. What the f is wrong with these pro players complaining about everything? This is a rant about how I truly think Apex Legends is being ruined by a certain demographic, and that demographic is the pro players. I have two main points to say in this video. Firstly, you pro players need to open your mind a little more. Stop being so narrow-minded and selfish. I don't give a f if this is your job. There is millions of other players having their fun ruined because now, I'm going to save you from watching the entire TikTok as, frankly, I think it does a bad job of laying out an actual position and it relies strictly on angry rhetoric in response to competitive community wishes. I think this reliance on angry rhetoric is inherently destructive, but people definitely enjoy utilizing it. And I have to ask myself, why? Well, it's because you can yell and scream to muddy the waters of a conversation. You can misdirect. You can misrepresent the other side's argument or suggestions because you're just yelling over them. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think showing emotion about an issue is negative. It often allows you to showcase to people listening that you truly care about the topic at hand. However, if your entire argument is based solely on angry rhetoric, I think you've failed. So what does the creator lay down as it describes to the competitive Apex community? Well, he feels the competitive community is narrow-minded and selfish, he also feels the competitive community gets everything they ask for. He takes issue with the gold knockdown shield being removed and the Kraber nerf. It's hard to believe any research was done by this creator to justify the anger towards the competitive community. 
I don't think they reach out to anyone in the competitive community to have a discussion. They saw changes, they see tweets or clips from competitive players, and they give no charitability to the other side. Now, he's not wrong. The competitive community did ask for the gold knockdown shield to be removed. However, they asked for it to be removed from ranked on the basis that you were able to squeeze out extra placement points in the final ring by just having a gold knockdown. Again, let me reiterate. They wanted the gold knockdown removed from ranked. Not pubs, just ranked. Respawn is the one who decided to make the change that they did. And he's also not wrong that the competitive community did want a change to the Kraber. The change that they wanted, however, is they wanted the Kraber removed from tournaments. They did not want it removed from ranked or public matches, just tournaments. Again, Respawn decided to make the change that they did. Are we starting to see a bit of a pattern here? And this isn't the only game currently facing this dilemma. Let's turn our attention to Halo Infinite. Yes, it's still a game a small, small handful of people play. And honestly, the Halo Championship series is the best thing going for that game currently. The competitive community entered a gentleman's agreement, commonly referred to as a GA, to not use the Nangler in early to mid-March leading up to the Anaheim event. If you're not familiar with what a gentleman's agreement is, it's essentially an agreement to not use a particular weapon, attachment, exploit, or mechanic within competitive play. To break the GA is to be blacklisted from the competitive community by not getting scrims or, potentially, not even getting on a team. The Mangler was thought to be too strong due to its damage output at range in conjunction with the weapon drop mechanic, its lethality up close with a one-shot melee, its spawn rate of 30 seconds, and the amount of ammo it spawned with. The vast majority of the Halo competitive community requested a longer spawn with less ammo and a potential damage nerf of its bullet. In April, 343 Industries nerfed the Mangler, but not how you'd expect. They nerfed the melee damage of all weapons in the game by 10% so that the Mangler could no longer one-shot melee. This was not something the competitive community asked for nor suggested. Mind you, they did change the melee damage of the battle rifle in ranked, showcasing 343's ability to change individual weapons as they see fit. Again, other suggestions were made to nerf the Mangler by the competitive community. It was 343 who decided to handle it their own way the pattern seems to reveal itself again. And it's not like we're in some zero-sum game here either. We have avenues to please both communities. If I think back to my personal golden age of online gaming, it's clear both communities can be happy. Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4 had thriving competitive communities while also being a ton of fun to just play with friends. You had your MLG tournaments and MLG playlists alongside wacky custom games and a solid big team battle experience in Halo 3. Call of Duty 4, you had Search and Destroy, hardcore game modes, along with the game battle scene for competitive gamers. But then your full-time working parent could hop on and play some domination with friends and progress via the prestige system. Now, the discussion about why that no longer feels possible is probably a topic for another day, and boy do I have my thoughts on that, but it's clear that this is possible now. If you've made it this far in the video, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell is this guy's point? Well, we have communities blaming each other for decisions made by developers that don't even align with what was being asked for to begin with. The reality is the devs decided to solve a problem in a way that hurt one group to hopefully better the experience of another. And I want to be clear, I don't know what their limitations are or why they decided to do X instead of Y, but it is still the reality. Do Spartan, Imperial Hal, his Watson, PvP, and so on put forth suggestions? Absolutely, as anyone should, but it's the devs that completely skirt the actual issues or gripes being discussed. That's not on the competitive community. Now, I'm definitely not saying you should push that vitriol towards the devs either, but I do feel we should be asking questions about their decision-making process. We should get some insight into that. Now, this overall debate, I think, is a microcosm of our society at this point. Pointing fingers, getting loud, getting angry, Lambasting another group as an enemy or stupid and creating an atmosphere of this is my side and we have to be right is pretty consistent in our society currently. We rarely, if ever, engage with the perspectives of communities we are not a part of. We hear a reason for why something is the way it is and base our reactions or opinions off that reason, whether it's true or not. We're quick to point to other groups in a similar predicament as us as to why things are bad, ruined, or going to hell in a handbasket. 
We rarely, if ever, look at the decision makers in a situation and ask ourselves why they did what they did, especially when there are better alternatives. We think that if another group is asking for something, we assume they want to take from what we have. We don't engage with opposing viewpoints charitably or in good faith, especially within the online discourse. It's in our politics. It's in our media. It's in our pop culture. Right now, it is everywhere. Why? Because baiting people with anger, stoking the flame, and creating enemies out of thin air drive clicks. They drive engagement. It makes the social media number go up. We have become slaves to the algorithm and the people who feed it with gas. If you're wondering what my goal is with this video, simply it's this. Just think about the content you're engaging with. There are bad actors out there in social media spaces, absolutely, but they are far fewer than you think. And if we tone down the vitriol of discussions online, gaming or not, we can more readily identify who these bad actors are. We can get to the root of a topic and actually discuss it. Now, I'm a firm believer that the vast majority of people, yourselves included, are compassionate, thoughtful, and well-meaning individuals. Just don't get caught up in the rhetoric. Don't fall victim to the algorithm. The unfortunately deceased writer Michael Brooks had a quote I've always tried to live by since I heard it, and maybe sharing it with you will spark something in you too. His quote was, be ruthless to systems, be kind to people. Until next time.